Hi, welcome to the bathtub. You know me, Scott Bradfield, the old masturbator. And uh, what we're doing, now you know the you know the whole story. There's no there's no tech. There's no pixels. We got the bird is real, pure mountain water. No no fancy tech and and Klieg lights like we used to do. In the old days, we're just using the natural light of day. Look at that natural light. The cruel light of day, which is, has somehow just in the past few tapings made me effulgent. I'm effulgent in this light. I'm like a Titian, one of those Titian masterpieces of heaven. I look, I have that same glow and I don't have the, that giant Titian ass that Titian was always famous for. I, I well, I, I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm on the way, on the way if I keep eating crap, which I've been doing a lot lately. Anyway, you don't need to hear all this stuff. You hear, hear about, find some books, find out some books. We're doing a very brief, a few, a few of these very quickly as I usually try to do. So I'll be wearing the same shirt. And this is a crossover edition where um, I'm going to print a link. I did a piece for The Spectator this week on a writer many people probably haven't heard of, Lafcadio Hearn. Lafcadio Hearn. And I'll just say a few things about him. Um, there's a new biography that just came out from Tuttle Press. Tuttle Press is this weird little press. I, they've probably been bought up by some horrible conglomerate by now. But they've been around forever, and they tend to do books about Asian or Asian-American culture cultural crossover stuff and very much into asian asian writers and histories and so forth and that is definitely where lafkadi harn sort of belongs so he had a he had a pretty pretty wild life he really he was a he was a lost soul he traveled a lot and did a lot of different things in his life and uh anyway this is a new one is called the outside of the new biography by steve kemi um What's most interesting about the, the Kemi biography, which I did not mention in the review I, I'm linking you to, is that the, the author was a journalist at the Cincinnati Inquirer, I want to say, or some Cincinnati newspaper. It's in the article. And um, learned about this guy, Lafcadio Hearn, who was working for the, the Cincinnati Inquirer 100 years ago. And so he kind of takes much... A, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of pretty good biographies of Hearn. I've read them over the years, a few of them. And... Um, what what Kemi does that other people don't, he focuses quite a lot on 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 Hearn's journalism when he was in Cincinnati and covering all these quite extravagant, you know, really kind of extraordinary and lurid uh, murders and uh, uh, killings and uh, child child nappings and just kind of horrific and horrific stories and adventurous stories when he was at the Enquirer. He's quite an adventurous reporter, and Kemi focuses a lot more on that than most people do. Anyway, that's a long way of getting to that. Uh, Lafcadie Hearn is kind of you know when you. People today are really interested in multiculturalism and so forth. He is kind of like a walking multicultural event. I mean, his his father was Irish, his mother was Greek. He was born in, born I think in Greece. I can't remember now. He had his mother, I guess, was a, supposedly a little crazy, and uh, ended up I think she died in an asylum eventually. And he was born into this fairly well off family. They had a bit of money. He was never when he was young. He he lived in decent houses, but both his parents just abandoned him. They both disappeared from his life and left him behind. The father remarried and kind of just pissed off and left him with, uh, I think, an aunt, a great aunt or something, who who herself eventually just cut him off and dis, dis, disappeared from his life. So he was quite a lonely young kid, and he was like many lonely young kids. Most of us recognize this. He spent a lot of time in his room, in his bathtub with his books. So he sat around with his books a lot, and he got interested in lots of stuff, especially kind of fantastic um, I think most of us who like fantasy stuff started off reading about Greek myths. That's how I got started. And uh, um, Lafcadio Hearn was interested in stuff about myths and, and gods and, and all, these, all these old legends. Anyway, he, so he grows up. He emigrates to... He lives in London for a while. He emigrates to uh, the United States where he's in Cincinnati for a long time. As a, becomes a very successful, very popular journalist. Because he does all these kind of horrible stories that everyone wants to read about, and he, he had a pretty good life there. He married an ex-slave named I want to say Maddie Foley. I had this all again. Read my piece. I'm I, I, not very good with facts. Um, remembering Althea, uh, Alethea or Maddie Foley, and she worked. I think she worked in a boarding house that he stayed in. And he was married to her, and it was against the law in Ohio to marry a black woman or a black woman to marry a white man. And as a result, he had all sorts of troubles. He got fired from his newspaper, went to another newspaper, and became quite successful. 
he made the other success, newspaper successful. So the old newspaper, the since I think the Inquirer tried to get him back, and it's always an interesting kind of character. He was uh, he he really knew how to tell these stories too. A lot of the this, this book uh, quotes extensively from some of the journalism, which is a lot of fun to read. So anyway, there's a long kind of life. He goes, he travels, and he's always interested in travel. He goes to uh, New Orleans. He starts he right, he publishes the first books on Creole cooking. You know, he was just a kind of a adventurous soul he liked he was he was lost and adventurous at the same time and he was always finding things that interested him he in the 1860s in the late 19th century he was hanging out in like bar di uh, bars along the waterfront collecting songs from the black musicians because he was interested in their, their culture um, his, his his relationship to Maddie Foley was kind of un, unhappy they didn't they, the marriage didn't last more than three years or they were both horrifically under pressure by the world around them, I guess, and they, they tried. They tried to make it work, and three years after that, um, they were divorced. Uh, Hearn goes to New Orleans, and then eventually he goes to, he goes to the um, West Indies. He writes about all of these places. He's kind of a, his, his greatness before his final work was, in, was probably as a travel writer, and he writes really, really well. Most of his stuff's free on Kindle, by the way. I, I can get a lot of it. I'm sure it's not the best uh, texts or anything, but they're they're perfectly readable. Pure Mountain Water. D Dodo's over there making a fuss. I don't know. Dodo, do you want to come out in a minute? Anyway, uh, so that's Hearn's story. Late in his life, he well, not late in his life. In his forties, he goes to Japan, and ends up in Japan and starts teaching English in Japan, and he really falls in love with his country, and he starts writing books and articles for American magazines like the, the Atlantic about his experiences in Japan and what he thought of this culture and the beauty of this culture, this old, the old world culture of, of Japan in the middle of the 19th century. And particularly not outside of Tokyo, kind of more out, out in the provinces for, for in a place, place called Matsui, I believe it was called, where he went to live. And he taught in the schools there. He's very popular as a teacher. All the students seem to like him. He, he had an arranged marriage to a Japanese girl. So he gets an arranged marriage her her family are like like her father was like a samurai you know like in those old Yuki, you know, Yukio Mishima and the old Kurosawa movies they're kind of like out of work samurais her father was like a out of work samurai who retired and didn't have any money so so Hearn marries this girl and as a result the whole family moves in with him he's a school teacher and he's got this entire huge Japanese family with him so he's a guy who's pretty much on his own all his life kind of is inundated with family and he seemed he seemed a fairly happy guy in the last ten years of his life. He begun he, besides writing about Japan, which is if you're interested in Japan and Western ver visions of Japan, you might want to check him out. What he's most famous for, and what I've always known him for, is the ghost stories he collected. When he was in Japan, in his books, in his memoirs, and all the various books he wrote about Japan, he often included these tall tales and these ghost stories, which are very different from Western ghost stories. If you've read, I have a few other. Well, who's the other one I've got here? Oh yeah, I mean this is the Ch the great Chinese collector of ghost stories, strange tales from a Chinese studio. Pu Song Ling, these are really wonderful. They're, it's, those are Chinese stories though. These are Japanese stories. They're all kind of twisted. They're 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 changed a bit by Hearn's own writing. So he adapts these stories. You can tell, and he sometimes has little little narrative games he plays with the stories. And they're very different. They're very plainly. They're very directly written. They're all wonderful ghost stories. Um, but as, as I mentioned in the piece, the ghosts in these stories don't always just come around and kill you or haunt you or anything. Sometimes they fall in love with you and they marry you. <laughs> or, or they're the ghosts of someone who really loves you and wants to marry you. And people sometimes, these ghosts come across many generations or many, many lifetimes uh, following each other around. So there, there's lots of romantic kind of ghost stories in there and horror ghost stories as well. But anyway, this is the Penguin Edition. Japanese ghost stories. Should be easy to get a hold of. Those are all my little notes things in there. As if I was really researching anything. And it's a wonderful read. I really just enjoyed it. His, he published a book called Kwaidan, which was just a little book of ghost stories. Many of which are in this book. And uh, you can get that on Kindle. I think a lot of his... All his all of his kind of interesting and odd travel books, I think most of them are free on Kindle. But I thought I'd just give you one little taste, the opening of this. There's 
there's a long story at the beginning and he kind of writes kind of magical worlds magical uh, visions of the world a world that's prettier than ours and here's one about it. as a child he tells a story about how he imagined a kind of faraway kingdom i have a memory of a place in a magical time in which the sun and the moon were larger and brighter than now whether it was of this life or of some life before i cannot tell but i know the sky was very much more blue and nearer to the world almost as it seems to become above the mass of a steamer steaming into equatorial summer the sea was alive and used to talk and the wind made me cry out for joy when it touched me once or twice during other years in divine days lived among the peaks i dream have dreamed just for a moment that the same wind was blowing but it was only a remembrance and this is a little, little passage from one of the one of the one of the lovelier stories in the book. Anyway, it's really worth reading. I enjoyed it. Um, you've, you've got the little quick capsule biography I tried to do in the little review below, and uh, Lafcadio Hearn. Okay, talk to you soon.